Welcome back. The Godot's Q1 report for 2021 has been released. This is an analysis of a multitude of data points across the internet to determine if the Godot engine is headed in the right direction. Spoiler alert, it is. This graph shows that at least one Godot game has been published every single day in 2021. And unsurprisingly, the peaks correlate with Godot-focused game jams. Here are the tags and software used to make those games that were published. As you can see, Godot is still the 2D king. What's missing here is data from Twitter, specifically the Godot engine hashtag. The author says he's working on a custom scraper as Twitter does not make getting this info easy. We may see this data in next quarter's report. There is a new proposal on Godot's GitHub to redesign Godot's 3D camera, pivot, and unocclusion system. Currently, Godot has a spring arm node and clipped camera node. The problem is that even with these nodes, it's not very easy to make a third-person shooter camera. This proposal outlines a more flexible alternative that should make the camera nodes easier to use and more customizable. There's some very interesting discussion going on with some hand-drawn diagrams on how things should work as well as examples of real-life cameras. Speaking of game jams, the GOTM jam number 3 results are out. The game Planet's Panic by Team Apple Pie absolutely dominated the jam. It ranked number one in every single category, which means Team Apple Pie is taking home the prize money for every single category. A very impressive feat. The Godot Wild Jam number 32 has started. You have less than a week to make and submit a game. The theme for this jam is 7. Submissions will close on April 18th. Marshalling has just been added to the packed byte array data type in GDScript. You can now encode and decode the different low-level data types of numbers in C, such as doubles, floats, and halves. It was announced a few weeks ago that the Godot physics engine was getting rewritten. Currently, Godot uses bullet physics as its physics engine, but the developers wanted to build a more streamlined, more performant in-house solution called Godot physics. And in that new physics engine, height maps are now supported. And now is the part of the show where we cover some cool projects being developed using the Godot engine. Franz Fury is a post-apocalyptic, top-down, arcade action murder racing game where you must save your cat Hans and become the meanest mutant in the wasteland. The game is not yet available, but it is planned for an early 2021 release on Steam. Starlynx is a 3D, on-rails, fighter ship shooter. A user by the name of Metal Mastery has made a cool splash screen using a reaction diffusion algorithm. He has published the source code, so feel free to check it out. Minotaur is a procedurally generated ambient exploration game. Blast Space is a 3D space shooter for Android. Fly through the tunnel and blast all the enemies. Raise and Shine is a 2D texture tool allowing you to easily create normal maps. Normal maps allow you to push the height up and down on a 2D image, which allows it to interact with light as if it were 3D. A ton of modern 2D games secretly use this technique to really make the game's visuals come alive. The tool is in open beta and can be run right in the browser. Star and Monsters is a 2D platformer with a vibrant art style. Planet Waves is an arcade tower defense game about protecting a small planet. Zoe and the Cursed Dreamer is a cozy open world RPG where you'll meet lovable quirky characters, live amongst them as a member of the community, and help guide them through the dark and desperate times that await them. It's made by none other than Game Endeavor, a content creator with a sharp wit who's been making the dough content for several years now. The Kickstarter is now live, so go check it out. That's all I have for you this week. Don't forget to like the video, and thank you for watching.